seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia Onipotente Atrás o mundo Jesus à frente Atrás não volto Não volto não And let's give to Jesus with joy A beautiful round of applause My brothers, God is truly wonderful And he has brought us here today So that we can have communion Renew our strengths and walk towards victory. He will give us the word of direction. Let's say a prayer. Dear Father, we are here at your house, hungry, thirsty. We are feeling weak, and we are here, O oh God, needing your help. We need that water that comes from heaven and strengthens us, that opens our eyes, that brightens our vision, that gives us strength to fight against evil. We are here, O oh God, asking for your mercy. O oh, Most High God, turn your eyes to all of those who are in this place, to all of those who are still arriving here that are watching us on TV. My dear Father, bless us all. Transform us so that we can be one in you. O oh, my Father, may we be in communion with you. And when we leave today, may we leave happy, joyful, O oh God, ready to overcome each and every battle. We came here, O oh God, to recharge our batteries. We came, O oh God, to ask forgiveness of our sins. O oh God, we confess all of them and we ask for your help. Lift us up and use us, God. Father, prepare us for the great battles ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and thank you. Thank you and amen. Let's sit, brothers. Folks, in the book of Psalms 110, King David is used in a beautiful way. He says the following, verse number four. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. He has given his word and will not turn back like we should do always. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. He is talking about Jesus. Then he says in verse 5, and I will read until verse 7, The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath, the opposing kings, the wicked spirits. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He's talking about the wars at the time. And he says here in verse seven, and I want to talk with you today. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. This is for us. If we are in the path that God has shown us through the word of God, we will drink of the brook. We will not be thirsty anymore, brothers. Today, we are here in the presence of the Most High, and he will reveal his word. He will talk with us. So let's truly pay attention because it is in this moment that he operates. He will make us drink water and he will also, he shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Through this blessing that he gives to us, the revelation of his word, therefore he shall lift up the head. He will not lower our heads. He will not give up, throw in the towel. If he, if he is not operating, it's because we are not understanding, but he is wise enough to make us understand what we lack. It is like what Jesus said in the parable of the persistent widow. The widow every day troubled the judge, asking for him to give her justice against her adversaries, her enemies, the ones that wanted to take things from her. So one day the unjust judge said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. And Jesus said, hear what the unjust judge said. He will do justice because he can't stand being bothered. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears along with them? So today is the day that we should place everything before God and leave here ready for battle. It does not mean 
that this battle will end completely. In some cases, God will be merciful and will end it. But sometimes we need to fulfill other steps. Where is Fernandes? Is the man of God here today? Come here, Fernandes, in the name of Christ. Today, let's stand up here because it's better. Yes, sir. We need to be in the podium, right? <laughs> yes, great word in the podium. High places, And right? in the anointing. In the anointing. Oh, There's God. no use to be on the podium in high places if you are not in the anointing. If we are not anointed, we cannot break yokes. It is because of the anointing that this what yoke will be will sing torn today? apart. If we cry out, if it we solves cry the problem. out to the Lord, everything is Dear solved. brother, you, will you be sad if I ask you to stand up, please, so that you can be free in his presence? Because if we cry out, if we cry out, our God will surely answer. We need to cry out, folks. We need to do something more than what you are already doing today. You need to assume your position before God. Get involved with God's people in this holy joy. Let the Holy Spirit visit you and lift you up. Let him put in your mouth that message, which on the right moment you will speak. Do not be rebellious against the Spirit of God. No, let's applaud our Savior. Se clamar, se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará. Dá lugar, irmão, dá lugar, que o anjo do Senhor veio te abençoar. Ele ouviu o teu clamor e a tua oração. O teu fardo ele já carregou, seu precioso sangue por ti derramou. Como ovelha muda foi sacrificado só por amor. Só tu és digno de adoração. É todo teu Senhor o meu coração. Tenho nova vida, agora sou feliz, porque tu estás em mim. Se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Com fogo nosso Deus responderá Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará Everybody clap your hands to Jesus Call to me and I will answer you And reveal to you many great and wonderful things Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Com fogo nosso Deus responderá Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Com fogo nosso Deus responderá Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar Fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará Dá lugar, irmão, dá lugar Que o anjo do Senhor veio te abençoar Ele ouviu o teu clamor e a tua a oração O teu fardo ele já carregou Seu precioso sangue por te derramou Como ovelha muda foi sacrificado Só por amor Só tu és digno de adoração É todo teu Senhor O meu coração Tenho nova vida, agora sou feliz Porque tu estás em mim Se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, com fogo nosso Deus responderá. Se clamar, se clamar, se clamar, fogo do céu nosso Deus enviará. Lift up your blessed hands and say with me, thank you, Jesus. Let's applaud our victory. Hallelujah. Brothers, you can sit now, please.
Look, what a beautiful thing, this photo from the meeting at uh, Bagatelli's Field that happened these days. And those who did not go missed out on it. It was beautiful on the Saturday of Hallelujah. We have been there on this date every year. This is the Faith Show magazine for the sponsors. This month, I'm asking God, and I want you to pray also so that God can help you if it is possible for you to improve a little, even double it because we are still paying some some bills from February during the carnival holiday. It was terrible, but God is giving us this victory in the name of Christ. Now let's go to Buenos Aires to see what happened there on, on Good Friday in the meeting that God allowed us to carry out. My voice on the video will be of an interpreter because I was speaking in their language, but God blessed us tremendously. Play it, will you? Our Argentinian brothers received the visit of Dr. Suarez on Good Friday, and they learned how our God acts. Brothers, our God is a consuming fire. Put this inside your heart. When you resist the devil, in the name of the consuming fire, you are placing fire that consumes the devil to burn him. Then he runs away and he's not allowed to oppress you anymore. Free from the devil's oppression and with faith in Jesus Christ, our brothers took part in the walk of faith. Raise up from your chair and walk a few steps without the crutch. God is blessing us. The wonders of God began to be shared. Sister, why are you using these crutches? Because everything was hurting. I couldn't even walk and now... Is that a stick? And now, yes, I can... For how long have you been using it? Since, Since 2013. So you mean yes, six I years. Guess. Show me how you walked with that thing. I walked like this. Show me, show me. The same way, like this. Now put this thing on your shoulder. Walk freely now. Glory to God. For how long did you walk with that cane? For three years, I've had a paralysis and that was why I was like this. You couldn't walk without the cane? No. Show me how you walked. Show me how you walked, brother. Like this. Yeah. Without it, you couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. For three years. Yes. Put it on your shoulder now. Walk freely, brother. Walk. Glory to God. Amen. Brother, you used these two crutches. I did. For how long? For more than two years. Two years. Two so you couldn't years. walk without the crutches. How no. did you walk? Show me, please. Like this. Without it, you couldn't walk. No. Without the crutches, you couldn't walk. And now. It was really Now hard. put both of them on your shoulders, please. On the shoulder. And walk now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. He is just beginning. My problem was from the feet up to here. I didn't have the strength to walk. And How did you I, walk before? I used a stick. Today I came with a stick, but I came to the stage without it. I left Where's it behind. Where's the cane she left behind? I shook did a lot. Did you shake? Yes, I didn't have the strength to walk. For how long have you been suffering, sister? For four years. So show me how you walked before. Show me how it was, exactly how it was. Even how you shook. Show me. I walked now, like this. Now, stop, stop. Put this cane on your shoulder. I went through two surgeries. Two surgeries. Did Jesus heal you now? He healed me. To so walk free now, sister. What a beautiful thing, brothers. Oh, glory to God. The consuming fire from God destroys everything that is corrupted by sin and it cleanses and purifies his people. Have faith, because it will happen in your life too. And glory to God, that's it folks. It is beautiful to, to go to a foreign country. There was no one there. Then they began coming, 10, 20 people, a humble work and we keep doing the work. And the church is now full of people now. And it is much bigger than this one here. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 28. This transition started from David passing on to Solomon. Here we have numerous lessons for us to learn 
because we are only passing by in this world. In a while, if you look here, Dr. Suarez will already be in heaven with Jesus. In a while, I will look, and many of you may not be here. There will be other ones. This is life, and we should prepare ourselves to go with joy, doing God's will, because the word says that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. He attends all things, and it is beautiful. Here, David did the following. Now David assembled at Jerusalem all the leaders of Israel, the officers of the tribes. First Chronicle 28, verse 1. And the captains of the divisions who served the king, the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons, with the officials, the valiant men, and all the mighty men of valor. So what did David do? David assembled the leadership and did not despise anyone. He was looking for unity. We need to think always about unity. Jesus said that a divided house would not stand. And always, in all generations, the devil raises people. It is one of his purposes that riot against the leadership. I remember when I was still young, I met a man, a really nice guy. He worked with importation, always well-dressed and telling everyone how he was prosperous. He was Portuguese. And he always came here to Sao Paulo and there was a movement that was starting and he went there to talk about our pastor. It was another vision that God had given. God was working in the ways that he taught them and the other one in the way God had taught him. But that person wanted to say that our vision didn't have any value, that we should change. So I said, no, I am out of this one, friend, I'm out. I will leave it to God to direct everything. And God always does. If you are following God's word, learning, and then a relative comes, a friend comes, a stranger comes, charismatic, and tries to lead your ways, you go with him. And when you realize you have stumbled. In the beginning of our ministry, we did meetings in cinemas, those that allowed it, because many of them did not allow. When the gospel was not as spread around, people were very prejudiced against us. If you tried to rent a space, you want to rent this place. Yes, I do. How much are you asking? For what purpose is it? For an evangelical church. For these things, I don't rent it. No, please go away. We were like dogs, like a mutt dog, and we were expelled. So we were doing a beautiful work then. God was delivering people, and we delivered a woman, well known. I always mention her story. It's not every time that I tell it. I have told it three times in my life. She had a, a real estate company with a partner that was from a traditional church. Our hearts were greatly disturbed because of her situation. We prayed for God to bring her and God brought this woman. I remember that she was very tall and possessed by many demons. Wow, that woman had demons like she had hair in her head. We expelled everything out. She became a blessing. And then I will call her friend, the partner, Jose. Jose arrived, I'll call her Maria. Let's say like this so that you won't be able to identify. Jose arrived and said, Maria, I heard that now you have become a Christian. I got converted, Jose. See, Jesus is beautiful. And Jose started saying, Maria, I want to say the following to you. Now that you have accepted Jesus, left all witchery and sorcery, I wanted to invite you to go to my church because our church is for people of our social level. There is harmonium and all these other things. And he went on speaking. Maria was amazed and said, Jose, you are not worth a thing. But why? I'm inviting you for a good thing. Jose, you knew that I did witchcraft, that I jumped the walls of graveyards on Fridays, also on Mondays to do works for the souls. I went to this and that place. Never before did you tell me about Jesus or about your church. Now the missionaries have delivered me from witchcraft and I started to seek Jesus. And you say that this is not for me, that the other church is only to start God's work. I was born there. They are my family, Jose. You are completely wrong. I didn't accept this coming from you. It is as if you have done an immoral proposition. And even worse, you want to take me out of the arms of Jesus. Jose did not know where to hide. You know, when the sheep is already clean, everyone goes after. There was another woman also that had many stores. She was also very disturbed. She was so disturbed that she had a print shop and she gave the name of the demon they served to it. Ugly stuff. And we delivered her. 
She one day arrived and said, you will not believe in me. A man from a traditional church appeared at my door, clapped. Hello, sir. I've heard that you have converted. Thanks to God. Now I belong to Jesus. You see, I am so and so from this church, and I want to invite you to visit us there because I think that you are in need of assistance. She said, sir, I am very well taken care of. So David did not want division. So who did he call? Now David assembled at Jerusalem all the leaders of Israel. He summoned all the leaders of Israel, the officers of the tribes and the captains of the divisions who served the king, the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons with the officials, the valiant men, and all the mighty men of valor. My brothers, we need to keep an eye on everyone. And when we feel it's time, we ask God for eyes not to gossip so that when someone is going the wrong way that stops coming to church, we may pray for this person. Because what the devil wants is to weaken the body of Christ so that we won't do what God has planned for us to do. So what did David want to transmit to them? Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. And I had it in my heart to build a house for of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made preparations to build it. He had prepared everything. All of the material was already prepared. He did the project of the temple with minimal details, but... In the verses ahead, he tells us more about this. But God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. David also had two extremes. He was a true worshiper of the Lord God, but he was also a true warrior. And it was necessary because the nations around him, when there was harvest time, when they were prospering, other nations came, invaded, stole Everything destroyed everything. It was a really difficult situation and they had to defend themselves. But David was such a warrior that his people in the 40 years that he reigned never lost one single battle. They never had to pay tribute to another nation, to pay taxes to another nation. On the contrary, the nations around them that stood up against Israel were defeated and became tributaries. David did the exact opposite. This is a lesson for us because those things were symbols for what happens in the spiritual realm. There are many people sometimes, even at the house of God, that are paying taxes to the enemy, tributes in the financial area, living in a misery that they don't even have an offering to give to our Lord God. And they even get mad saying the pastor's asking for too much money. But if the work is extensive, no one is obligated. God will provide the means. And this is the way that God provides. The Lord Jesus had in this ministry, team Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him was also the thief. He was a thief treasurer, but Jesus still asked for offerings and people helped him according to what the Bible says. And Judas then stayed with the, the task of paying the expenses because they had expenses. They traveled from city to city. They had to stay somewhere. They had to eat to do the work of God. And today it is the same thing. We had the graceful help from the Lord to spread our ministry in 173 nations. And we have the most beautiful testimonies taking place, brothers. We don't emphasize this too much so that you won't look, won't put the spotlight on us, but Jesus instead. But people are being healed. They are being delivered. People that are succeeding in, in pleasing God, enjoying the benefits of the work of Jesus. And all of this we are doing. We are God's people and we should continue like this. So David assembled everyone there because this construction could not have a crack and it cannot. When someone is doing, going down the wrong path, intercede for this person, pray for the person like this Portuguese that was causing sedition with young people. And it was one of ours that presented me to him. You need to meet him. I'll call him Manuel. It wasn't his name. So you need to meet Manuel because Manuel has important information. I started listening and I said, no, Manuel, I will remain at my church. This is the place where God is blessing. I don't agree with you. It weakened Manuel's malicious, malicious work. He was being used by the devil. Sometimes people become interested in another one here, but he or she is married. How will someone do something like this? 
What should you do? You pray, God, I don't want this. No, I am a member of your body that is gathered here and I don't want this type of thing in our midst. And God removes them, brothers. If the person does not want to leave because those cheat that have malice will not remain at my house, says the Lord. We are responsible for this, but not to keep saying, gossiping, talking bad. On the contrary, to pray, to seek God. And when we intercede, God helps. So David said here, but God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. What happened? God revealed who would take his place. And it was his son, Solomon. Dr. Suarez, if you die tomorrow, do you have a successor? I don't. God will choose, brothers. He will show. We have many pastors that are used by God here. And certainly one of them, God will choose. I'm not saying goodbye, no. But if it happens, what can I do? One day we will die. I still think that I have a lot of strength here to do, a lot of strength, a lot of energy to do God's work and will continue consecrating myself to God so that the Lord God may bless our lives. Let's love one another. Love the things that God is doing and God will certainly keep us in the name of Christ. And when the day arrives, you will go, I will go in the peace of the Lord to the other side and we will know nothing. There's no such thing as the person watching us from heaven. The Bible says it's not this way. The Bible says the dead know nothing. Once I was at a funeral of a very well-known Christian and his grandson said, I know that my grandmother is watching for us wherever she is. After dinner, I went and said, brother, can I speak to you for a moment? This was far away in the United States. He said, sure. The Bible says that the dead know nothing. Is it written? He didn't know. And I said, yes, it is. No, forget what I said. My, <laughs> my grandmother does not know nothing and really doesn't. We are here, must fulfill the will of our God. Let me pray with you, Father. Do not let the devil weaken our ranks. And don't let us despise any of our brothers, Father. Father, we cannot despise. These are lives that you will unite them with ours, that we have the privilege of being used by you to bring salvation and that need your help. Visit all of your body, O oh God, all your herd, which was given for us to shepherd. We rebuke all action of the devil that is operating in people's lives to destroy a marriage that is operating to bring diseases, to remove prosperity, to destroy people's homes. We rebuke this, O oh God, and everything that stands up against the happiness that you have given us for your people, it is destroyed in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. And Father, thank you very much for your glory and amen. Let me pray now for those who are with health problems and decided to come today to receive a prayer. Stand up and I will pray for you now. You that have decided to come to this service today to receive a prayer from me. And look, I will pray as I always have prayed. I will pray in the name of Jesus. Believe. And when we finish the prayer, if you are not believing now, don't even stand up. Stay seated. No, Dr. Swadis, I am not with faith today. Because when I finish the prayer, you need to receive your blessing. God does not show by no means. He shows no partiality and doesn't look at us and then choose this one I will bless, this one not. This one has to suffer a little more. God wants to release everyone's suffering. It is the enemy that causes this. This evil feeling that today is not my day. This insecurity. No, God wants to bless us. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, I am entering in the name of Jesus into your presence. I am here, O oh God, to bless each person. I am here, O oh God, to undo all yoke from the devil that has sunk these people, making this man suffer, this woman suffer, destroying peace and love. My Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, I paralyze all action of the enemy in these lives. Pain, disease, disturbance, my God, this evil action, the result of a stroke. Young people are having strokes, Father. 
They are having serious health problems. My God, visit your people now and heal them completely. If it is the industrialized and processed foods, like some people say, that contains many elements that could not be combined, O oh Father, heal these people. If it is a direct evil action, also bring your healing now. I will use your power as a minister of the word of God. I rebuke all evil forces that are in these lives causing any change of behavior, change in the glycemic index, cholesterol, triglycerides, these things, O oh God, that disturb us when they are not regulated. Father, I command them to get back in order in these lives. May this pain be destroyed, this disease be consumed now by you, for you are a consuming fire. My Father, I pray for all people here to be healed. I command, determined, that this lump leaves, that this hernia leaves, that this tumor, this fibroid, this cancer, oh God, whatever type it is, this lump, even if it's benign as it said, oh God, all things that should not remain in their bodies, in the throats, Father, in the thyroid, oh my God, wherever this evil is now, be destroyed completely and leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, embrace these people now, strengthen them, enlighten these eyes now, it is for your glory, Father, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Give us the right direction and amen. Look at me now, brothers. Do what you could not do before. Dr. Suarez, it was hard. I could not put my hands on my back. Put your hands there now. I could not hug myself by the neck. Do what you could not do. I could not lift my arms all the way up. Do this now in the name of Jesus. Now, the knees also, the foot. It was really hard for me to do this, Dr. Suarez. I couldn't do it. Like this, upwards and to the side. You should be able to do it now, brother. We are praying to God. Do it in the name of Jesus because he is operating. What couldn't you do? Dr. Swartis, my pain has left me. Evil already went away. Who can say that evil has left now? Raise your arms like this to thank the Lord in the name of Jesus. Evil has left at this exact moment. Glory to God. What left your life now and must leave for the glory of God? What happened with you, dear sister? I don't know if I ate something rotten, but my stomach was hurting a lot, you know? And I was even afraid of, of drinking water. And now it's gone. It's gone, thank you. Glory to God. to God. Whose pain has disappeared now? Dr. Suarez, my neck was not turning to the side. My head was not moving, my chin that I couldn't put into my chest. There are people who have already been healed, but do not be ashamed, folks. It's not good to be ashamed. Speak up, sister. I arrived here, Dr. Suarez, with a pain in my back that I was even sweating because of it. Uh -huh. So when I arrived under the church, the pain left me. And until now, Thanks to God, it has disappeared. And it will not come back. come back. If it comes back, say the door is closed. Dr. Swatis, I was feeling pain in my lower back, and now it is gone. Who is this person whose pain disappeared? Felt pain in the foot anywhere. You should not be shy because God is operating. I know what I'm doing. Up in the gallery, what happened, my friend? See, I was also feeling unwell here mm -hmm. since, since the moment I arrived. Stomach as well. It was around this region. Thanks to God, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. What about you, sister? What happened? I felt pain in my legs, in the hip. It's gone. Glory to God. This is beautiful. And you, sister? Due to the boot I use at work, my feet uh -huh. hurt in the sole. Today, to arrive here, I came slowly. Now I'm not feeling pain anymore. Amen. Glory to God. I was feeling my mouth dry. That's what is now it is humid. This can be a great blessing. What God does has to be shared. You, what happened? I was feeling a headache and very distressed. My mouth was dry. Now I'm healed in the Glory name of God. Jesus. Beautiful. And you, what happened, sister? I also felt pain in my hips, Dr. Suarez. Uh -huh. It was hurting a lot. It's gone. Thank God. Glory to God. 
Is there anyone else, folks? We don't have a lot of time today. We can't wait too much longer. Anyone else want to tell their blessing? The pain in the chest that has gone away. You are right, that's why I felt the pressure in my chest. It disappeared. Who is feeling pressure in the chest in the name of Christ? We cannot be ashamed, brother. Tell us the truth. What happened to you, sister? I felt pain in my neck and in my throat. It was dry. Glory to God. Anyone else want to tell us what happened with you, friend? Tell us, please. I felt pain in my eyes for two days. I was using eye drops. Now I took off my glasses, rubbed my eyes, and I don't feel anything. Thanks to God. Okay, let me finish the prayer here. Father, all these people that were healed, that gave a testimony, will remain healed. And those who have not shared, Father, have mercy. Give them there this blessing. Take Take all shyness. This person that was with a pain in his left thigh, Father, in the frontal part, and the pain is left now. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And thank you for the blessings that we don't even know about yet, but that you have operated. In the name of Christ, amen. You can sit down and let's now watch the real life drama, shall we? Since 1997, Marco suffers from back pain. I used to work at this very big warehouse, and there we carried a lot of weight like cement, steel, these things, you know? When I felt this pain, I couldn't move. He locked. His friends had to carry him and take him as if he was a statue, a dummy. It was a lot of suffering for him. She saw me feeling pain, and she tried to do and be the best person she could be. The pain was very intense, and I cried like a baby. There was a moment that I couldn't take it anymore, so I did an MRI, and and they found out that I have a problem of a herniated disc. The vertebral bodies are represented here. Bones, so there are two vertebra, and in the middle there is a disc, a softer uh, component. There is a small cape that protects this disc. And this cape can suffer a laceration and it will leave this part soft because of the load that it receives when we walk and run. Not only a herniated disc, but also osteophytosis. Three or four of them, you know. In this model, we have a vertebra. In this region that we call vertebral body, there are some ligaments that as as someone gets older, they may ossify in the region of the vertebral bodies. We have the ligament that does the traction, which produces the osteophyte traction, also called osteophytosis. This suffering lasted approximately 20 20 years, more or less. The doctor told him not to lift any weights, not even a kilo of sugar. And I couldn't do anything. Every time I tried to lift up weights or something, the pain would come back, you know? I had to leave my job. For about two or three years, more or less, I had financial difficulties. We didn't have enough food for the kids. We were from another church church, you know? Even though I was going to a different church, I always watched the messages of Dr. Suarez's program, The Faith Show. I watched people saying that they were healed from this and that, and they were healed through the television, you know? I started to be strengthened by his message, and I learned so much. This year, during a break at work, Marcos watched a message from Dr. Suarez. I was feeling this, this pain, and I couldn't do anything about it, but the TV was on, you know? And that was when Dr. Suarez came out and said, if you are feeling pain because of a herniated disc, prepare yourself because I will say a prayer so that you can be healed. And he spoke in a way that it seemed like he was talking to me. That blessing was for me. I stayed in front of the TV and held on to all the blessings I could receive with a lot of faith and a lot of desire that when he finished praying, I jumped and I ran. He was healed because from that day on, I didn't hear any more complaints from him. Until today, for four years now, I don't feel any kind of pain now. He's working normally. Today I can work just fine. Nothing's lacking at home. I started to pick things up again, to bend over, you know. God healed me. I never had to go back to the doctor again. After he was healed, Marcos became a member of the Grace of God Church and also became a sponsor of the Faith Show. 
When Dr. Suarez spoke about being a sponsor, I became a sponsor. For the salvation of my whole family, for peace in my house, you know. Being a sponsor means bringing blessings to our lives, you know. It was the prayers and God's blessings that healed me. Thanks be to God. Glory to God. Let's give an applause to Jesus. This man, Marcus, said that being a sponsor brings blessings for the family, and it really does, because God has called him. I don't want anyone that does not feel God's calling. Absolutely. If this work is from God, from A to Z, he will conduct us. He will give me the messages to preach the right prayer, like the one that healed him. He didn't come to church, but was healed at his job. God touches the hearts of people to register, and they sponsor with joy. It isn't something that brings division, the wife against it, and the husband in favor, or vice versa. No, both were there, saying that it was a blessing for them. I ask you, have you been called? If so, the workers will pass on the form, and I only want your registration today. Fill in the form with your name and address, detach, and give us back this part. Whatever remains with you is for you to go to the bank and make the deposit. But where, Dr. Suarez? At Ned Bank, at any branch. And by the way, in the next couple of hours, if you are a sponsor and you haven't made the deposit yet, please go because we are going through very difficult times. I call it dangerous because of all of our commitments. If you have lost the payment bill, please take note of the number of our account arriving at the cashier in Ned Bank at any branch. Tell them that you want to make a deposit and the amount of to the International Grace of God Church. They will ask you in which branch should they make the deposit. The branch code is 103910. Write down this information. Branch code 103910. Please take note. And the account number is 101191-9540. 101191-9540. This information is already enough. And you can call us from anywhere to sign up. The telephone number is from Cape Town, 27 plus 021-911-567-27 plus 021-911-567. Write this number down right now. These days I am changing the program Speak Up, friend, because I need to do the campaigns. If I keep on doing the traditional way, two and a half hours, my time is over. So I, I will combine with the Faith Show, which is a really nice program, and I cannot despise it. I will repeat them for sure. In our time at Ray Hedge TV Network, the program that comes first is the Faith Show. Then I repeat the same one at Band Network. Then people will know which program they can watch, and we'll mix it up the message with prayer, because I need... Where is Sister Eliana? Sister Eliana, how are you? I am well, Dr. Suarez. Sister Eliana, are you with the books in hand? Yes, Dr. You Suarez. You are very quick, Sister here. Eliana. We talked yesterday here. Everyone I'm saw... I'm already here prepared, yes, Dr. Suarez. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that we have more than 60 books written by you and yeah. other authors. I brought three to represent them that are wonderful. Fear, close this door, stick to Jesus to be victorious, and faith prayer. Mm -hmm. These are pocket books that everyone should have to read and evangelize someone else. It even fits in the pocket of exactly. my shirt. Exactly, and the price, Dr. Suarez, from $6.98. And God uses them a lot to speak to you our You are hearts. very charitable, Sister <laughs> So after the service, they will go there and you will show them. There are also movies and other things there right beside us. There's a store outside our church and from anywhere else you can call this number to have more information. 27 plus 079 plus 079 It's really easy to call us. Our website is ongracesouthafrica.com. What's up? 27 plus 079 Let's now open up our heart. Dr. Suarez. I have been married for a couple of years now, and I have two sons. But since we got married, we live in the backyard of my mother-in-law's house. I have never gone through so much sorrow in my life as I have been living these last few years. My mother-in-law clearly wants to show me that she hates me and is always yelling at me and fighting with my kids. She even makes my sons cry because of her constant fighting. I would really like to have my own house. I can't wait for the moment to move to a place that is mine. 
but this is very hard to achieve because I can't find a job. Dr. Suarez, I don't know what to do anymore. I need your guidance. Well, the Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. You need to leave his parents' home. You Now you had to think about this before you got married, seeking God, asking, preparing yourselves to go into the job market. Pray because God has a thousand manners to teach you how to prosper in the name of Jesus, and then you will follow his path. But don't be mad at your mother-in-law, no. This fight between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law is normal for those who don't follow the Bible. But for those who follow, no, you should not take into consideration and forgive and live with wisdom. Living well is something that requires wisdom. Let's watch now the Grace TV moment. Uh, before in my house, we only did worldly things, you know. Totally, we drank a lot, so we fought for anything. Grace TV is a blessing for us. Grace TV helped us a lot here at our house. We converted to Jesus, and then, so that my husband would take possession, and me as well, to help him and be used by God. We watched the services through Grace TV, you know. He helped us greatly at home, and also the deliverance that we had. We didn't watch feudal programs anymore. I have my granddaughters and daughters that come here, and when they come here, they all watch Grace TV. My daughter even asked me to also have it in her house. I don't want to come all the way to your house to watch, even though I live nearby. I felt peace. This peace took over this place, and our fights don't exist anymore. Grace TV has carried out a complete blessing in my house. Get this brochure and take it to your house if you don't have Grace TV and pray. If God touches your heart, you should call us. The telephone is right here behind so that you can for us to install it. If he doesn't touch you, throw the paper away. It doesn't cost you anything. But this can change your life completely. They were converted, but they drank. They fought a lot and all of this ended. It will bring peace to your home. Believe in me. Grace TV today is a blessing for your family. You can call us from anywhere. The number you should call is 27 plus 0794969037. plus 0794969037. What's up? 27 plus 0794969037. Let's stand up now so we can pray. I want to open my heart with you now. Pastor Jaime will help me with this prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Firstly, Father, I pray for those who are at home, in the hospital, or anywhere else. And God, I ask yet again for the healing of these herniated discs. There are many people that feel pain, O oh God. Father, I use your authority to rebuke this evil and any other. And I command to leave these people in the name of Jesus Christ.